Welcome everybody to Sanity Lost, where we have heartfelt moments sometimes just for me to ruin it all. <laughs> Is that foreshadowing? We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> tonight, tonight at six. Oh, no. Dave asked, who all had kids? Because I'm going to murder them two episodes in. Yeah, see, what? I decided not to have <laughs> any more children. That way he can't rip them away from me. Hey, if we remember in the prologue, I was saying... Y'all want to make maybe make sure your kids, ha your characters somehow produce some sort of offspring, <laughs> 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 because that way it will just make it easier in case your character dies or goes insane or ages out. Yeah, it's true. Um, but I I think I'm not uh sticking to that rule as much because like I'm I'm knowing some of the things are coming up in the future. And uh, there's something I'm thinking that, I don't know, it might be interesting at the same time. Might not. I'll worry about that. It's future <laughs> stuff. We just started, got to start taking on, like, mentors or mentees or something. Like, you know, oh. passing our, our wisdom and knowledge along to the next generation. I mean, I, I, th like I don't think... Like Skip is uh, doing with Poe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Skip's <laughs> going the wrong direction yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's it's just kids where kids make sense, and well, <laughs> kids where kids make sense. That's the I... best way to describe having children. <laughs> Sometimes ever... it doesn't make sense. Sometimes <laughs> it's like those suckers just like, "Hey, I'm here now." <laughs> <laughs> like there was definitely like some teamwork between the parents, but it was like the parents. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. I don't know. I, I always, I always laugh at like the tweets or the like, the screenshots of pretty much tweets where there's just like, I find it weird when I uh, hear that a couple is um, <laughs> trying for a baby, and it's like, well, I didn't want to know uh, how much you two were. Well, I'll just quote them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. Well, now uh, I'm glad. I'm glad that you just uh, gently admitted to the fact that you and your your husband or you and your wife are pretty much raw dogging every night. It, <laughs> it is very weird how culturally we do that, right? Like we don't talk about that until someone's trying to get pregnant, and then it's like totally normal to like talk about like like female cycles and how much you're trying. Like it's very weird. It's very weird that suddenly you cross that line and like. We can talk about it. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's fine. <laughs> it's weird. It's very weird. Yeah. I don't know. I also feel like society as like a whole, like with cycles and all that stuff was very taboo to talk about. And I feel, I don't know. It might just be like some of the somehow I don't go and look it up, but it's like, sometimes it just comes up on TikTok, and I'm like, no, oh, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, cool. I, and so, yeah. but I think it's not as much of a no. a taboo thing. Well, I think it's where... very like trendy right now too for like women yeah. to like be very open about their cycles and like live their lives around their cycles. So, like, I mean, I see it on social media all the time. I think it's just like trendy right now, which is not a bad thing. I'm not opposed to that mm -hmm. at all. I think that like no, you just super hate it. I hate it. I mean, I sometimes hate my own cycle, so I guess I could say that, right? Yeah, don't remind me that, you know, every four weeks I turn into a monster. <laughs> don't love that. Actually, it's more so that I just can't, like, function because I'm so tired. It's not uh, I saw a couple of videos favorite. of, like, uh, like, everyone focuses on the, like, one moment, and it's like, no, it's a whole, like, month process. Yeah. And it's like, I didn't know that. That's pretty interesting. And I can't remember it all, but I'm like, oh no, it's it's like it's interesting of like how everything works. And then and then the like the other side is like, no, like men also have a cycle as well. It's just like I don't think uh I think trying to remember you guys it. are on a twenty four hour cycle. Like that's the big difference, is that we're overachievers. You you're on like a you just every day. Every day is a new cycle. Whereas women, it's more of every every week is a new life experience. 
we have NASCAR and the uh, long distance. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Area, that's like how you that. put it in I American like terms. Yeah, I like that analogy. That's good. You, have the... you, got, you have NASCAR and F1. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking See, Dave, you have you the uh, trend. you have the funny cars the the uh, the straight line really fast, and then you have oh, the yeah, enduro track. race. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where you meander, and you know, every once in a while, you get walloped by a. I don't even know what's on those courses. No. Or not. Or not even enduro Camaro. rally. <laughs> rally. There you go. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Turn left. At the blah blah blah, <laughs> and I'm, I, I'm thinking the uh, off road, tr- more traditional off road rally, mm-hmm. where it's mm, like yeah. just out across the desert. You got you have a week to get across. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it uh, actually probably is very much like that, honestly, because you like start off strong and then you get a second wind and then you hate your life and then you like <laughs> end with like, uh, okay, I could do this. Like that feels very much like a woman's cycle. <laughs> <laughs> have to change the tire in the middle of it. Yeah. <laughs> you might need to slow down a few parts and speed back up. <laughs> It's a good metaphor. Dave, you can jump on the uh, TikTok trendiness now. You have a great way of talking about it. You can mansplain <laughs> to all the women how to think about their cycle. Uh, yeah. Listen here, racing. womans. <laughs> Listen here, all you womans and wannabe womans. <laughs> I am here to explain all. I don't, all I don't think... I don't think you want to add wannabe women's to that. (laughs) But it's all the rage anymore. (laughs) You will get rage. That is for sure. (laughs) So it reminds me of something else. I'm like, should I say this on a recording? But I don't know. We're already here. Where... um, I think Since when has that stopped anything? Yeah, I was going to (laughs) say. Well... We'll find out after I say this if we agree it should be taken out or not. Um, okay, everyone be quiet for like third, like half a second so Dave can cleanly edit this when uh, we need to. Whatever, I'll just awkwardly cut it out. I don't care. It's uh, pretty much like, um, I think it was like the these two women standing near a, uh, a transitioning uh, male to female. Uh-huh. And... Uh, I forget what happened and like she the 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 trans person was just like like they said something it's like oh my goodness i can't believe, i think i'm on my period and they're just like that's physically not how that works <laughs> <laughs> and uh and so it was a little bit of pushback you know all that stuff or whatever but Anyway, okay. Um, now, now we take that momentary pause, and now everybody react. How could you say such a thing? <laughs> the funny thing is, knowing how my brain works, I've already forgotten. <laughs> and we're right like, back. I'll around. Like, you're certainly right not going to remember where in the podcast it was to yeah. go back and edit yeah. it. Yes, so, but so, that's where the that's where it makes that reaction to the not cut even funnier. So if anyone is really angry about this, you're going to have to DM Dave the exact timestamp because (laughs) it's too late. It's already out. It's already out. Like, (laughs) who cares? Like, okay. You mad? Cool. But anyway, get educated. Cool. Comment below. Anyway. Comment below with your rage. It's That's like, cool, you were mad? Hey, well, at least I got a view out of oh it. Oh, my God. Exactly. <laughs> I just want to We got comments. It's interaction. I do not support. Elizabeth is on the I record. I do not support she this as our this. marketing strategy. Look, it worked for so many other people. Listen, it's just as bad as they're turning the frogs gay. Now we gotta go oh. and stop. <laughs> wow, where did you pull Alex Jones out of? <laughs> uh, that is a good question. I never watched. I was any gonna of say, stuff. where that's did you the only find thing I, that? That's the only thing you I got know. The voice too, like that's the thing. Like you pulled the whole thing out. <laughs> I'm like a shade of red and slightly heavy too. So. <laughs> 
Listen here, I want you all to go out and buy my pillows. <laughs> no, that's uh, Mike Lindell. His yeah, uh, Alex Jones know. stuff is um, uh, he ha- male vitality. That's what he yeah. sells, male vitality. <laughs> I I took a um, a never ending break from the news. A never and ending my, break. My. My mental health has never been better. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I, 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 I tell people like at work and like on stream, like I used to like really keep up with it, and then I remember one day I was listening to a podcast, and it was only thirty minutes into it, because like I wanted to know what was going on in the world, and but I was like irrationally angry at mm. what they were saying. I'm like, yeah. I think it's time to know more. Listen yeah. to this, and uh, yeah. I've been, I've been in a better mood. Like now, I just get little snippets here and there. Yeah, and I'm like, that's all I need. All I would like is like a like quick update. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, give me the TMZ for the political world. <laughs> <laughs> the TMZ for the political. World. I I don't I know how that. that works either. I never watched or looked at that either. <laughs> so, um, but any poop. Um, talking about worlds. Um, it's a small world after all because it's Christmas. <laughs> and thanks. Now I have that song in my head for the rest of the year. <laughs> you go. <laughs> well, according to this year. There's only uh, about a week or so left. Well, but this is very soothing music. I'm yeah, well, this. this also sounds like the music that they play for people coming into church. So, yeah, at this point, uh, it is definitely the Christmas Eve service. Uh, everyone is kind of getting into their seats. I guess it wouldn't be called Christmas Eve service because it's a Catholic church. I guess it would be called Christmas Mass. I don't know. I am not Catholic, and... Uh, I just thought Christmas of Eve I, mass. I think is a pretty yeah. common one. So, um, in everything I was trying to get done, I forgot to look that up. So, if we have Catholic people listening to that, feel free to correct me. But by the time you do, it's too late. So, um, but please leave your comments below. <laughs> yeah, and hit that like button while you're at it. <laughs> Look, we already we already pissed off the LGBT community. It's time to piss off all of the religious oh people. Am I allowed to do that one because uh, I'm religious? Sure. Where's the line? I got the approval. Actually, yeah, Take we can piss off. Yeah, yeah, we can piss off the religious people. They, yeah. although the, I was gonna say they they should be more angry about certain things, but they are just ang- they're just angry about the wrong. Yeah, things. like the gay frogs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was angry about the wrong thing, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's who's can talking you please, about. Hello, please, it's me. Please, please, can we have an Alex Jones character show up in this? I w- that would make my life. Um, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> well, we don't know if it'll be this chapter, but <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we can get actual Alex Jones <gasps> to show up in the future. That would be so uh, fabulous. Him. Because making conspiracy theories that are like wildly inaccurate in the midst of a real conspiracy theory would be the best like Alex Jones depiction of all time. We have Joe Rogan interviewing Theodore. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> I love so... that. I would watch that just by itself. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, now that we uh, are trying to manifest dreams in a game that I in a in a game in a world that I control, <laughs> um, we are now people are walking in, and it's like at this point everyone's shuffled in. Um, I am. I I'm gonna you know what? Why not? Everyone's got candles. That's one of those candlelight oh, services. Okay. I mean, of course, of course. Um, once again, don't know if that's a. A Catholic tradition, but I know every church I've been in it so. does that. Mm-hmm. I think it is actually. I mean, you see like Catholic churches advertising. Look, church history loves fire, so <laughs> we're going to uh, just keep that going. Um, but anyway, yeah. So like, maybe you guys are all sitting there with the candles and all that, and uh, the lights are kind of like dimmed a little bit as um, like. Uh, yeah, Father Bailey's kind of sitting up in the front. Um, 
And, uh, but yeah. You, um, you guys are coming and taking your seats, and one thing that, uh, I don't think we've, we've ever mentioned, uh, off air is, um, I, I think maybe briefly, but I, I think that was mainly between John and I, but how has, uh, Caleb and Cora's relationship with Skip gone? Yeah, so, I mean, like, we don't, go ahead. So I, I think as long as Skip, which I don't think he really noticed the, particularly that Caleb had been shooting at the creatures, but as long as, as long as Skip doesn't really mention anything about that, then I, I can see them being, n not not really friends specifically, but at least cordial and not uh, not openly hostile or anything like that, since the. The attempts to acquire the mine disappeared, and <laughs> yeah, that, that was really the biggest uh, mm -hmm. conflict between Caleb and, and Skip was that whole that whole scene. But yeah, I can I can see them being cordial and yeah, potentially trading information a little bit here and there as you know Skip is looking for different things, and yeah, you know, maybe Caleb has even used Skip services here and there for something happening with the mine or something like that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think on Cora's side, um, uh, I think she would be as she has her entire life, um, maybe to an annoying degree, trying to like befriend Skip and not so much like, to actually be friends with him, but to um, like keep an awareness of what's going on and what he's doing and what he knows, especially because um, he very specifically has asked, like their relationship started off with him like poking at the secret society stuff. And so she would, um, she would want to try to keep, I guess, hands on him. Um, so I think what that's looked like is just like, like inviting engagements or interactions anytime she sees him. So like presenting herself as like a friendly, open, you know, she called him at the end of last chapter to see how he was doing. Like she probably would have like asked if he wanted to talk about it, like that kind of thing. So I don't know, John, you can like uh, weigh in on how much he would take her up on that, but she would be offering like more than just a wave in the in the street kind of relationship sure um yeah it's i mean i think like i mean he definitely would have probably more with cora because he's aware of cora's like connection to like weird groups in the area or like that there's something there so i could see him having like at least initially you know tried to get more information about what happened i guess i don't know how like forthcoming cora would have been about that right yeah i mean i think she would have talked like pretty openly Wait. about like what happened like what what you saw and experienced mm -hmm. definitely would have like talked openly about that um and maybe even some like just weirdness about the town i don't know that she would have gone super into like i don't know maybe you could even say that some of the information you know like about uncle buster and stuff is from her mm -hmm. sure yeah, because I mean, I, I don't think he would have gotten like a lot of in-depth info because then he wouldn't need to be looking, you know, or trying mm -hmm, to like dig up yeah. what's happening. So it's, he knows enough that, you know, he knows there are, something weird is happening in this town. Um, and so he's at least been let in far enough to have people talk to him about that, but I guess to a certain extent, he's probably still viewed as as an outsider to a certain degree. You know, maybe more of like somebody who's tolerated in the town 
and like his presence is accepted, but he's still an outsider and so doesn't have all the like inroads that like somebody who was born or grew up in the town would have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it also like is um, Ashley and and Skip, I think would have come in close around the same time, but it was like, I think some people like as rumors spread, like still know the reason you're here. And then maybe there's still like kind of questions, like why is this military person still here? Mm -hmm. And to the point where they're like, mm, the majority of the people here accept you. But, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, like, um, but not if you if you wanted to have more of a, a connection with with Caleb as well, like because he was there, right? Like, um, yeah. I mean, I feel like they would at least have like, you know, a shared experience type of connection, right? Like, so mm -hmm. um, maybe that was like like an a uh, forced of forced by Poe because <laughs> it's just like <laughs> you need friends <laughs> and and so like maybe Poe was like kind of and maybe that's like why everyone isn't like super hostile or or just like you're you're more in your maybe more in your mind as an outsider but it's like the town is just like no that's just kind of Skip kind of keeps to himself mm -hmm. but uh right but it's like a lot of that got there to the more patience because of like the forcefulness of Poe just like <laughs> just making sure he's just like he tells you I'm not gonna be around for long so uh, you <laughs> need to make sure you have friends but I, I can also stupid see stupid loner I can also see Caleb having a a level of respect for for Skip just because he didn't leave with the rest of the townspeople with when these creatures mm -hmm. appear sure yep he, he mm -hmm. stayed to fight and and helped yeah. mm -hmm. uh, quite heavily in that fight. Right. So it, there's yeah. the, there's going to be some level of respect there, just to, and acknowledging that mm -hmm. res that he did stay for that and didn't just run. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So anyway, all that happened, like pretty much the that was going on. Um, so like maybe. Uh, um, the Carters and, and Richmond uh, all kind of get there. Cora's family and Ashley, they get in there first. And I said uh, Father Father Bailey's sitting up in the front. I think he's more at the door and he's just like, oh, uh, welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming in. Because, like, at this point, it's been... I don't think you guys have talked to him since Chapter 1. And, like... <laughs> <laughs> he he is definitely older. Like I think he uh, also had red hair. I think I can't remember. But like whatever his hair color was, and, like he's got like um, like the Reed Richards, where the side of his head is is kind of white Great and out, yeah. yeah, grayed out. And then maybe the top is like the colors fading because I I have it written down somewhere. But I. I had to think he was a redhead, but I can't remember right now. And uh, we're gonna keep it moving without me looking up in my notes. <laughs> um, so, but he's just like, like definitely like kind of older. Definitely looks tired. Just like, but like, happens is like, oh, wait, wait, thank you, thank you, Cora. It's good to see you in the family. Father uh, Bailey, uh, Merry Christmas Eve. It's good to see you. Yes, yes, and you and you and. Uh, and Ashley, uh, it's, it's good to see you guys together. And and uh, looks over and just kind of <laughs> gives like a, a nod to to Jillian. Is just like, oh, well, don't worry. I just realized I did J and J. Anyway, <laughs> 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 just uh, yeah, but don't worry. He'll be here later. As you uh, see, Ashley just quickly. Reaching dudes, just joking, <laughs> and so and it's just like he kind of gives a knowing smile, and like uh, maybe this was something she was kind of talking to. I I I imagine that uh, Jillian is very like a practicing religious person, and mm -hmm. is like kind of part of it, which is maybe why she's pushed a little bit more for you guys to come out rather than that. And then he's like, yes, yes, and then like Tim. Walks in, he's like, "Oh no!" 
<laughs> it's just, and he's like, you, and like, he, he's like, Tim, Tim, it, it's been a while. And uh, Tim is like, or Tim's just like, that, don't worry, I, I'm not carrying knives, and uh, like, he, like, seemingly from nowhere is just like, here, and like, gives him like an apple, like, and <laughs> just like, here you go, Stuffed like, his sorry, with, with the he's apple. like, <laughs> And he's like, you're just like a regular um, Johnny Appleseed. That's <laughs> Tim Appleseed to you. And they, and Lab's like, ah, oh, I remember when, when you set the baptistry <laughs> on fire. I'm still wondering how you did that when there was water in it. <laughs> Trade secrets. And he's like, <laughs> <sighs> yeah, please don't. He's like, don't worry, that's behind. I'm, yeah, I'm. I won't say fully matured, but I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting there. And he's like, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's good to see you. And he's just like, yeah. It's like he kind of has this smile, like cracked up over his face, and like maybe as he's doing this, like that's when uh, you know, hey, you gonna hold up the line, or are we gonna get in a refreshing? And it's like we hear uh, Poe just kind of. Just hollering like behind, behind Tim, and he's like, "And I still have the list of books you have don't have turned in." And as uh, and uh, like Father Bailey's just like, "Oh, Mr. Poe, it's a it's a great to see you." And uh, oh, hey Skip, uh, we're glad to glad to. Oh, I lost his voice. Glad to uh, glad to have you here. Um, as he kind of goes and shakes your hand. Skip uh, just gives kind of like a somber nod back and is, you know, just like a simple father. Mm -hmm. It's like, and like he just kind of pats your arms like, oh, yes, we, we cleared out a, a space over there for, um, for, for wheelchair accessibility. I don't think in that time people cared, but whatever, it's 2023 <laughs> when this is being recorded yep. and uh, we, do, we do what we do. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, he kind of like, kind of points over, like kind of um, near uh, the center a little bit, like as uh, you can kind of see closer to like the aisle, closer to like a window is, is there. Um, it's just like, you should be, you should still be able to get uh, some a good view, and he's like, and uh, I suppose like, yeah, yeah, now where's my candle? And like, <laughs> they, and uh, he uh, kind of goes in as uh, a few more, a couple four, more minutes pass by, and then we just hear um, a joyous, uh, I was trying to think of cacophony was the right word, but it's a loud, joyful noise as, uh, we have uh, the seasons showing up, and uh, it is—it's definitely noticeable. Like people are able to hear like the kids and stuff like outside as like you guys come in. As Rose is like, shh, shh, be quiet now. We're we're in church, and uh, and like as the kids like, as uh, definitely like the the air and everything uh, is becomes more more somber and. And uh, Father Bailey just like catches eyes with you, Caleb, and he's just like, "Oh, it's good to see the family come out and uh, welcome, welcome." And um, I also imagine Rose. I, I can't remember if I said this last episode, but uh, I imagine Rose was um, more deaf, had a religious upbringing, mm. and um, maybe I I'll. I'll leave it up tonight if Caleb like allowed Rose to take uh force him to come to church. But uh <laughs> yeah, it's like it was one of those things like she kinda always asked, so like maybe uh it doesn't have to I'll leave that up to you how that it, looks, but uh I, I imagine he probably went not all the time, but most of the time with her, just mm -hmm. not necessarily enthusiastically, but willing enough to keep Rose happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like, he's like, oh, um, Caleb, I uh, just wanted to let you know we're, we're trying to get um, some of the young, young boys together in the new year and like kind of teach them some uh, basic skills. And I was wondering if there might be 
I know you're super busy with the mine, but maybe there can be a time you can come down and uh, maybe show them uh, something. It's, it's, trust me, it's not something for me to get free work out in the church where uh, it's kind of like more little crafts uh, and like kind of building like a toolbox or something. But we, we can talk about it if, uh, if it's something you think you can fit in your schedule. I, I think that's probably something we can arrange um, as long as it's not uh, too late in the, in the new year. Yes, yes. Um, no, I, I'll, I'll definitely call you uh, later this week about it. As um, we, you know what, we're gonna have the first roll of uh, chapter three. Uh, mm. Can you give me a spot hidden? Let's see. I gotta find it on the list there. That is a forty-four under forty-nine. Yeah, and so like out of the corner of your eye, like you see your twins are just like, like their eyes kind of get wide, and they're just like. Dad's gonna, Dad's gonna do what? And it's just, uh, <laughs> they, they're like already like, and this was not Father Bailey's intention. Like you, very easily. Like he was just like, oh, I'm, you're here, and I remembered. So he kind of mentions, yeah, me, a few of the other fathers in the area. Well, Dad's not, not, not a clergy, but um, no, we were, we were thinking about it, and uh, you came to mind. But no, we, this is not the time to talk about that. So. We can figure it out. Um, as like you guys, uh, as he kind of ushers you in, and and like slowly, like people, like the rest of the people come in as uh, a small uh, sanctuary fills up. I found out that apparently this church actually still meets today. What? Like, it. Yeah, it's like one of the few buildings that is still used and didn't get destroyed wow that's cool so, yeah so um yeah people still meet at saint ignace huh um so um i think there was probably repairs done to it and all that stuff but uh well, look at that mm -hmm. that's fun um but anyway like after a couple minutes like we have like definitely the um one of uh you know what? Um, you see, like, a young man kind of just playing the piano as people are coming in. It might even be this tune. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but as he's playing there and um, uh, he's just going up and um, Jillian, who's, like, sitting next to to you, uh, Cora, she's like, that's Jeff playing the piano. <gasps> wow, he's really good. Yeah, he's, well, he came in as the music teacher and, like, you see him, like, he's kind of got, um, kind of, like, uh, well put together, like, jet black hair and, like, um, kind of, like, a more olive complexion as he's just kind of sitting there and, and, um, like, he's very he's, handsome. And, and, like, uh, even in, like, the dim light, you can kind of see, like, Jillian, like, kind of having, like, blushing a little bit, like, yeah, uh, and so, um, but, uh, yeah, so this is all, all kind of going on, and, like, yeah, like, um, he's, okay, if, if it wasn't very obvious of the description, he's, um, he's definitely Italian, and, like, he's got <laughs> the Italian features, uh, of it, of there, and just, um, which makes sense because I said he came from New Jersey. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it all fits together. Yeah. Wow. Brain. Um, <laughs> so, but I want you. Can you roll me a listen check? Yeah. Hold on. Let me get back to Cora. Ooh, I might pass that. <clears throat> Sorry, it undid yeah. all of my stuff. <laughs> it's all good. All right. Oh, yeah. So she got a 31 under 44. Yeah. And so maybe uh, Tim is sitting on your other side as you kind of hear him lean over. It's like, so that's the guy we have to take out, huh? And she, like, you hear Cora like very uh, aggressively like stabs her elbow <laughs> into Tim's uh, rib cage, just like hard jab into his side as yeah as you hear um as you hear uh 
Ash just like kind of chuckle and like he's like oh, I'm joking I'm joking <laughs> <laughs> man <laughs> and uh, after that like um, everything goes down everyone settles and um, like it's definitely like the warm glow across the room as um, Father Bailey like takes up uh, in front uh, stands behind the pulpit and he's like Oh, yes, I'm. I'm glad everyone could make it. Uh, we see a, a few, um, a few new faces here, and uh, just uh, wanted everyone to know. Yes, uh, right here, Jeff Steele. He's um, he's pretty much uh, one of our new um, new teachers here, and he uh, graciously accepted to just to give a little bit of background music for the night. But um, but we do have a a special. A great, a great special uh, time um, tonight. As uh, we have um, a traveling pastor, uh, Matthias Trillborn, and uh, he brought his. Um, I said born. I think it's burn. I'm old. Excuse me while I stall and just read my notes for a second. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, sorry, Matthias Trillborn. Um, as he, uh, yeah, he's coming, uh, pretty much through, uh, just the area, and, uh, yeah, he pretty much, um, yeah, we're, we're just honored to have him here, and, uh, later he has, uh, the Harmony 3, uh, his, um, his, just a three-part singing group that will come up and, and lead us in some music later tonight, but, uh, Oh, and like Matthias, uh, kind of, like he kind of reads. Oh, sorry, there was there was a quick change. They're actually going to sing us a song now, and uh, and then Matthias will come up and and give us a, a Christmas Eve sermon. And I know, I know, we want to make sure that everyone's able to get home tonight, uh, so that way they can get rested for uh, the Nutcracker showing on the TV. So, um, because at this time, uh, in 1958. On Christmas Day was the first time the Nutcracker was shown nationwide on the TV. That's cool information. So, Who was, says yeah. we don't give you good history? Yeah, <laughs> the, it might have been the reason I chose this date because, well, there wasn't any other fun Christmas <laughs> facts that I could find. Um, but anyway, uh, that he's he kind of just mentions, and there's like a chuckle amongst the crowd as like. Uh, there's definitely some excitement uh, for for that event, but now everyone's here for this. And um, you know, and this three, you know, like these three people come up, and they are they're we very well dressed. Um, as like they kind of get up there, and uh, it, it you see um, just three, like the three people, two two men, one woman, as uh, the one, this one with the long dark hair and like snow white skin, with like he, he looks build wise, he's pretty pretty average, um, but like he kind of kind of has like this kind of like sneering kind of like facial feature, but he's just like, but yes, hello everyone, I am Brother Kevin, and uh, we are here. Uh, I'm the tenor of the Harmony Three, and I'm. We're here to introduce ourselves as we, we just lead ourselves in a, a little bit of uh, a song I believe we all know, Oh, Coming Around the Mountain. That's not the song. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> I thought of the song, and then my brain immediately forgot what it was. <laughs> that's not From the start of that, Oh, Come Let Us Adore Him? Religion. Yeah, there we go. we <laughs> 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 be coming around the mountain. Yeah, coming around the mountain when surprised. Oh, Let Us Adore Him. <laughs> Yeah, it's a no. special uh, arrangement. No, I'm just... I, what, now, what's more surprising that I was able to interpret that <laughs> yeah, or the, yeah. the name of initially? Uh, I, no, as soon as they're... you said that, I was like, "Wow, that was a that was a, a pull out of nothing." <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm just I was gonna agree with any song, but anyway, he's just like, um, "Isn't that song go town over the hills and everywhere?" Go, go tell Jesus it on Christ the is... Did yeah. you combine? Uh... Go tell it on the mountain with "Oh, come, let us adore him." Is that I mean, what that's happened? What I, that's what I said. I don't know. 
whatever. It's okay, so we're going to sing a Christmas song. <laughs> just <laughs> just, tell it just go with a simple song. jingle bells. And you'll be yes. <laughs> Joy to the world. <laughs> yeah. We're pentatonics. Anyway, <laughs> um, and so like he he like kind of and he's like, well, I'll let the other two kind of introduce themselves as um, the this tall, um, dark skinned. This man, bald, dark skin, and like he, he looks like he's built like a rock as he just kind of stands up and like he has this large like smile plastered across his face and he's just, he's like, Why yes, hello, my name is Brother Billy and as you can tell I bring the low notes. And uh, as... Uh, and he's like, we're thankful that you guys are able to have us here. And like, he, they're all kind of wearing like, kind of choir robes. Um, and so like, and his like, I don't know, it looks like it's kind of sitting a little bit weird. But like, I don't know, he, he, there's nothing that like, overall kind of, it's just like, eh, it might, must be caught on something. Um, and then lastly, like, um, this, um, Tan, this tan woman with like if hair dye was prevalent back then people would have been like is her hair dyed but it's like like we see like we see Caleb's family as like they definitely got like the more natural red hair like her red hair like seems to be like vibrant as like it's like catching the light as like uh, but as like she kind of has this like thin frame but like she has like this very dead pan expression on her face and she like definitely a higher pitch voice than i can do but it's just like and my name is sister lewis and we are here the harmony three to lead us in songs and like they they do and like it is like they uh it is like three-part harmony that is just amazing and it's like everyone is just like one part amazed and then uh like even like everyone's just sing singing along and it's just definitely a joyous occasion that this song doesn't um is not showing <laughs> like it's like definitely one more upbeat christmas songs is like people are clapping to where like we even see like uh poe just like if you don't clap i'm going to hit you <laughs> and like uh, to skip <laughs> is uh in his like kind of joyful like kind of smile like just over at him like more kidding but he would um <laughs> and the the song comes to an end um as uh billy speaks up and he's like and now we're going to introduce um, the man with the voice uh here we go matthias trilburn and like everyone's like kind of giving an applause as they go sit down and and uh, you can hear, like, um, Brother Kevin just like, don't worry, we'll be back up later. <laughs> As uh, they kind of take their seats, like, um, kind of a little bit, like, kind of off, off uh, to the side of the stage. And before Matthias comes up, I need some water. <laughs> <laughs> Some good old Hawaiian volcano water. <laughs> the good Taken stuff. directly from the volcano. Yeah. Dehydrated. It's dehydrated water. That's a joke from a completely different show that's not released <laughs> yet. Um, so. This tall, blonde man, his, his hair is swept back. Um, definitely a little bit younger. Would challenge, like skip's attractiveness like even though skip is still very beautiful like even uh like he matthias would not um be hindered in comparison to skip um but like as he kind of gets up and he turns around you see these it almost looks like they're glowing these emerald green eyes that just look out amongst the crowd and he's just looks at everyone and he's like well now everybody I'm I'm glad that I was able to be here 
We weren't sure if we were going to be able to make it in here, but the weather was a little bit rough, and then uh, uh, we had someone in New York tell us to come down here. And so it all worked out. And here we're here to tell a little, a little tale of uh, the reason for the season, if I may be so bold. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Harmony3, for, for singing. Um, and yes, uh, if anyone is wondering, don't worry. We'll be home in our families, but at least by, in the next couple days. As you can tell from my, from my accent, I'm definitely from the South. Uh, maybe uh, if any of you guys are familiar with the Mississippi area. But we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about the one who came this night. The one that would gum many different nights. And, uh, like, he kind of is taking the stage, and, like, the more you guys look at him, like, he's wearing, like, this... Like, uh, the Harmony 3, they have, like, these white suits, and, um... That, like, these white robes with, like, kind of, like... It looked like kind of, like, green accents on them and stuff, and, like, he's wearing, like, this pure white suit and he's like it's very like dazzling as the light uh catches um and he's like kind of goes over and picks up the candle um from from the advent wreath and excuse me he's like that's the that's the thing about flame once it starts, it, it always seems to, to leave evidence. Just the same reason we celebrate tonight. The same reason we get together every, every year, for no matter what we're doing. And it always leaves a memory. A ember. A scorch. To show a sign that something was here. And sometimes, it's something we're not expecting. Sometimes, it could be something from a completely different place, a different world, some might say. And he, he's like, and I have a few questions to ask. I need everybody to roll power. But you all have, um, for an unknown reason, it has been 20% harder. So we lose 20 points? Yeah, lose lose 20%. Cool. That is a 65 over 50. I rolled a 2 under 45. I rolled a 56 over 40. Okay. Uh, I need uh, skip. You yeah, you rolled two under. So you definitely extreme success. You know what? I'm, I'm going to roll over the extreme. You notice everyone around you is stuck. It looks like they are all standing still. Okay. As Matthias keeps going. Now you see, I've heard uh, through the grapevine that it seems like something has been here in Centrilli itself. I've heard that it seems like some, uh, there's been some interesting things. And, like, he kind of points to, like, a random person in the crowd. Like, he actually, uh, points to to like Dean Hudson as like he's like now sir if I asked you something in fact come up here and like Dean kind of like st stiffly walks up like you guys all are seeing this like uh, as he kind of <laughs> stiffly walks across like people like very straight back to the stage and he like looks at him in the eyes and like he already was older like he's probably close to the same age as um uh Caleb's parents 
and uh, he's like, now, <laughs> now, sir, if I asked you anything about uh, Uncle Buster, what could you tell me? As he like glints this huge smile across this face, as Dean's just like, and he was, uh, and like he sounds like in a haze, and, like he was just clown. I'm starting to talk like uh, everyone's Matthias. He was this clown that showed up and took everybody in. Yes, yes, but isn't there something, something else? There's something that's missing, isn't there? You, and like he points to, um, to, let's see, he actually points um, at, uh, to Rose. And he's like, come here. As, like, she kind of does the same thing and kind of stands up. How much, uh, um, can I ask, how much awareness? You guys are all seeing this, like, kind of No, going I know, on, but, like, but no, yeah. like, even if we, is the, whatever the spell is, is this just, like, a physical thing? And we can still, like, could Cora be, like, processing that that she's stuck or is this also like a I, mental thing it, i think it's a men it, not thing it is a mental thing going on right now okay um but like pretty much the perspective i'm saying right now is kind of what skip is seeing but right um, i'm just curious like what but like the I, experiences of the person under the whatever but yes like i'm gonna say that like the mention of uncle buster is a red flag and so roll i'm gonna allow you guys if you wish to roll constitution yeah i was gonna say because if cora has the awareness to know what's going on then she's gonna try and fight it if she can mm -hmm. okay yeah, i mean on hearing uncle buster I, both caleb and sarah are gonna be a bit freaking out too not that mm -hmm. it really helped Caleb in this case with an 86 over 49 on that constitution. Yeah, yeah. no, I got a 65 over 50. And on, obviously Skip is like very tuned in at that name because that's, you know, a name he's come across in his research. So he, he sense, he senses something weird is going on, but like he's not mm -hmm. taking action yet. He's trying to figure out what's happening. Yes, I. How also, can you roll? Sorry, I'm curious how uh, close Skip is to the to both Cora and Caleb's families. Yeah, I mean, I probably would have stayed off wherever they had put Poe, so wherever, like, whatever spot they had kind of cleared for him. Probably, I yeah. feel like, kind of off to the side, maybe in it's the also, back. Yeah, and with like, uh, I, I think maybe you guys were a little bit like he was like, yeah, kind of. A, a little bit towards the back and stuff just for ease of access and I would say you guys are like middle center mm -hmm. um, but uh, I need I want to uh, skip I want you to do an intelligence check for me uh, real quick as a as I continue let you can let me know that in a second um, so I don't think this music matches what I was hoping for. So let's go. This probably works a little bit better. Yeah, which, I don't know, this might change a little bit now once that the shift in uh, tone as he's like, he Rose comes up and he's like, now, dear, can you tell me what happened to your good old mayor? And the precious rock he held. As, like, Rose is like, well, the, the mayor was having health issues, and she, she, <laughs> he's, well, he's, he's getting, getting help, and he's like, <sighs> And, uh, pretty much, uh, what was your intelligence check? It was 86 over 70. Okay. Something in the back of your mind is like, 
tickling a little bit. Like this, like something about Chillburn seems familiar, and like, like just, uh, but you're not able to place it. Um, but anyway, like he goes and turns his like, his eyes seem to like flash with his, like the, the vibrant colors. It's like he. He points, uh, let's see, he points at, a um, another person as Buck Kelly stands up, and he's like, Now, sir, you can stay where you are. The stage is getting a little full, but what can you tell me about a man named Theodore? We'll see you next week. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Getting right into it. I said this is going a lot <laughs> faster. <laughs> oh, well, then. Boy. With that, that, with that cliffhanger. Yeah. See you in like a month. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> we have other stuff we got to do. We got some money to raise. <laughs> Yep. So anyway, thank you everybody for for listening. Um, I wish I played this music earlier because this has got the vibe. But anyway, <laughs> see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.